something we all need Gotta have it now if you wanna succeed Striving, surviving, that's no doubt Sticking together, we gon' find a way out So all you young people, give it your all So all you young people, give it your all So all you young people, give it your all So all you young people, give it your all Good evening, the back community. You know how I like to start these things off. Uh, thank you for staying involved. Thank you for staying engaged. Uh, it is still Women's History Month and uh, the interviewees that we have for tonight are actually a part of, well, actually the founders of uh, the Hearts and Minds Training Center. Uh, so we have with us today, uh, uh, Ms. Laquetta uh, Alexander Ellis. All right. Thank you for waving to the crowd. For those who are uh, watching the video, for those who are on audio, uh, on audio that's Aquetta. And then we also have Miss Odasia uh, Burton Garland. So uh, and these two are the founders of the Hearts and, uh, Hearts and Minds Training Center. And uh, you guys are my featured guests. So thank you for being on the back community. And I can't wait to dive into you guys' story. Thank you for Thanks having us. us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, listen, because uh, this is going to be a double whammy because I have two dynamic women with us today. Um, and I really want to give you guys the opportunity to tell the back community more about you. Like I said earlier, this is all about highlighting you guys and what you do. And uh, I love seeing what you guys were doing. I read the article in the Times Union, but here's your chance to tell the back community and our audience more about you. So uh, let's see. I'm actually uh, actually. Uh, should I choose who goes first, or, or do you guys want to want to see who steps up first? Hey, go for it. Okay, okay. My my natural instinct is actually going to be uh, be to go to Quetta, so I'm going to do the opposite. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, here's my first question for you, Odeja. I'm coming to you. Uh, what kind of work do you do? Uh, How did you get involved in your work? Here's your opportunity to tell the back community more about you. Um. So I started out as an RN. And I've been an RN for about 15 years. Um, I started out as a pediatric nurse um, originally, and then I switched over to um, add to my uh, resume adults. So um, I work in critical care. So I work in the ER and I work in the ICUs. And I also do um, work at Albany Med um, in radiation oncology. Mm. So um, pretty uh, diverse. Um, background, but it's all kind of the same kind of thing. Okay. okay. All right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a very, a very important uh, work, especially after living through a global pandemic mm -hmm. and, and seeing how much we are actually, how much more fragile we actually are as human beings. Uh, people start to really value the work of nurses. Um, so yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, and Quetta, baby, I'm coming to you. Everybody, I'm gonna be calling her that throughout this interview. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Miss Alexander Ellis, uh, please tell us what kind of work do you do and how do you get involved in this type of work? Um, I'm an LPN. I work for the hospitals. Didn't like it so much Went on the home care side of things. Love home care. Um, I love my geriatric patients. I'm not a pediatric type of girl. So <laughs> I have that part. Um, I love my geriatrics. Um, when I was a little kid, I always wanted to teach. I used to have my little Barbie doll set up and mm -hmm. whatever happened in school that day happened that day at home in my bedroom. So um, teaching was my passion. So as I got older, I decided instead of working for other people, why not work for myself? And mm -hmm. that's when I be, you know, I wanted to go ahead and start teaching. Um, I taught at Brentford Hall and Schenectady Community College first, and mm -hmm. then I branched off and started doing my own thing, and Odeja came with me. Yeah. <laughs> and our minds are just like, we just think of like, sometimes we text each other and she be like, I'm doing it right now. Or like, like last yeah. night, she's like, you got eyes watching me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it just yeah. works out that way. Um, yeah, she's very smart. I use her a lot. She nice. tells me the answer. She tells me why is that answer. So she's <laughs> my brain. Mm. Um, but it just works out really good. And I like that. Your answers. And I think that definitely helps. Like she deals with like a lot of home care patients. And she has the, she taught before. I teach um, 
like other nurses, but she's mm -hmm. taught from like a lot of students that had no medical background. Mm -hmm. So, nice. you know, she gives me like tips on how to, um, cause sometimes I kind of teach at a higher level and she'll bring me yeah. down like, hold up, wait a second. They don't have that experience. <laughs> so. Yep. Yeah. And, 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 and actually, it's really important, too, especially, you know, what I mean, catering to your audience. So, you know, what I mean, I remember I went to go speak to my son's school not too long ago for Father's Day. And one of the other guys who was there and he was talking in straight uh, uh, a jargon from his job. I'm like, bro, I don't think they're going to understand that. You got <laughs> yeah. a little bit, you know, what I mean, but it's important. And actually, you guys are covering uh, 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 both. You know, you got pediatrics, you got geriatrics. And you just realizing that, uh, like I said earlier, how fragile uh, our communities really are. So we really do need skilled and gifted nurses that have the capacity to work with and touch these vulnerable populations that we're working with. All right, all right. So that's so so that's the two of you guys individually, uh, but collectively, you guys were able to come together and create something. And I know right there in the back of you guys, you have it. Uh, up for everyone else to see. So you guys were able to create the Hearts and Minds uh, Training Center. Tell us more about that. Where did the idea uh, come from to start your own training center and, and why the name Hearts and Minds? Can I take that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, you think about compassion. Hmm. So that's where the hearts came from. And then um, mind. So like education, so you kind of put it together. So that's kind of kind of simple, basic, but that's kind of what it is. Okay. So uh, we you know we, we could provide um, compassionate, you know, care, and uh, you know, we also teach. So, and we also the way our um, curriculum is, we are training our students in a timely manner. Four mm -hmm. weeks is for bottoming. Mm -hmm. um, and we're getting them out in the field and they're working. They're nice. not coming here for two years. They're not waiting for a diploma. They're right. coming here, getting trained, hands-on experience. We're nationally certifying them and they're getting mm -hmm. jobs. Nice. Now, our goal, especially with the pandemic, get we people need working. To get people working out in the healthcare field. We have right. students that's been with St. Peter's for a year now. We have students yeah. that's leads at St. Peter's now. Um, mm -hmm. St. Peter's has been our right hand um, throughout this whole pandemic. Nice, nice. And and wait a minute, but so so uh, 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 when did you guys actually formally uh, start the Hearts and Minds Training Center? Was it was it during COVID or was it before COVID? Yeah, yeah during right, COVID, right, right, right before COVID, right before. I mean, we was doing it virtually, pandemic, everything shut down. And they were just like, okay, now we have to wait till things open back up again. So it was what March 2020. Mm. Then, okay. Okay. Back into yeah, and then we came in person early last year, about April 2021, yeah. and it's been on go since. Nice. So mm. um, we started off with just phlebotomy, mm. and now we have EKG. Now we have mm. the medical administrative assistant, which is like a medical secretarial position. Mm. We also have CPR and first aid and uh, mm. BLS, which ACLS. is basic life support, ACLS and PALS. Um, we're also going to be starting um, NCLEX review for new nurses that just graduated that need help with their boards. We're also going to be doing a TEAS review for people that want to go into nursing school. So we, mm. we're here. Expanding. We're expanding. Okay. Right. Okay. People. <laughs> right. <laughs> I see, I see. And actually, you know, uh, I did mention earlier, like I said, uh, I was able to stumble upon your work through an article that they did on you guys. You guys were featured in the Times Union. And I was just like, wow, you know what I mean? Th this, this is amazing work. And, you know, uh, so uh, that was how I first uh, uh, had come to following you guys. But now I regularly see you guys just dishing out these certificates and you guys are getting your students, like you said, out here performing and actually working. So to date, uh, do you guys have a number of how many students you've actually worked with and certified nationally already? 135 students we have nationally certified. Yes. St. Peter's has 25 of our students from a year ago and they're still there and they're still hiring. So every four weeks, we encourage our students to apply. St. Peter's mm -hmm. call them, they get the job, they go work. I love it. I love it. I love it. And, and I know uh, you guys originally started off with phlebotomy. And I, I can never say the word uh, uh, that <laughs> way. But uh, as I also said, my mom was also a phlebotomist. 
uh, mm -hmm. before she transitioned over into uh, city government. So uh, when I when I found out that that was you guys' passion, I'm just like, well, you know, oh, we need to talk about this. We need to bring this to the forefront because a lot of people don't know how we sent you uh, just to everyday life and, and actually just taking care of, like you said, geriatric or, or pediatric patients is, is, is it's, a, it's a huge part of it. So but yeah. Um, OK. OK. Let me see. Um, I also. Um, let me see. Uh, one of the things that uh, I wanted to do for you guys also, because, it, like I said, it is Women's History Month. Um, and I wanted to make sure throughout the month, uh, the, throughout the month of March that uh, I uh, certainly highlighted and um, amplified the work of women because you guys are doing dynamic work. You're uh, very positive individuals, but I want to get to know more about you. And uh, I'm gonna ask you guys a few questions uh, uh, if you don't mind. Um, and I'm also gonna come back to asking you some questions about the training center, because I believe we have someone, uh, one of your students who's gonna be joining us as well. So I can't wait to get to that. But uh, my first question for you guys is this, uh, and actually quite, I'm gonna give this one to you as well, because uh, I'm coming to you for this, uh, because I happen to know that you did grow up in the Capital District area. And for those who know the premise behind the back community, uh, the initial concept was just to highlight those individuals from the Capital District area, Albany, Troy, Schenectady, that, uh, that area. And it started to expand because the audience has expanded. But um, uh, for you, growing up in the Capital District area, Quetta, uh, uh, was, was mentorship uh, important to you? Did you have a mentor uh, as you were growing up? Um. I wouldn't say I had a mentor, but I would say that um, my sister was, uh, I don't want to gas her head up too much. So let me <laughs> use my words wisely right now. <laughs> my sister, and she still is. Um, she's definitely a good guide for me. She tells me, sometimes I'm like, yeah, whatever, but I, I listen. Um, she tells me, you know, what I should do, what I shouldn't do, how I should do things. Um, she's good with the money, so she told me ways to, you know, get into the um, finances part. Um, but I will say having my daughter changed me. Mm. Um, trying to do this without crying here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, and why? Know, the old Quetta did some, some things. She had a child, and her child changed her life um for the better mm -hmm. <laughs> all the time um without her i don't know where i would be um mm -hmm. i did some things um that i totally regret um but i can't take it back you know so i just moved forward Absolutely. um and i try to show her the lead you know mm -hmm. she want to be a brain surgeon so i want to get her in that medical field and try to you know guide her the way i wasn't really guided to where i am now um, she is in the STEP program at Albany Medical Center, um, mm -hmm. science technology engineering program. She's doing excellent in that. Um, we're starting college tours with her. So mm -hmm. I also bring her into our classroom to show her what we do here in the nice. classroom. Ariana knows how to draw blood now. She knows how to do CPR now. So I'm trying to, you know, guide her to the, because I wasn't guided this direction. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember sitting on my grandmother's couch next to my grandfather um, and the Mildred Ellie commercial came on. Mm. I didn't have no diploma. I just had, I had nothing. I, I left school. I was a grandma grandpa's girl. So I was always at grandma's house. Mm. And the commercial said, you could get your medical assistant and your GED at the same time. Mm. I went ahead and did it. Ever since, I just took off. Um, I never look back and I still don't look back. I just keep it going. Um, I'm starting the RN program in September, thanks yeah. to Odeja here. Um, Encouragement. We encourage each other. We do. We really do encourage each other. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so, my master's one day. But. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really think my daughter is mm -hmm. what really changed me as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm showing her not to give up. Anything is possible. Um, People gonna talk about you. Let them talk. You know, just you know, just talk. Look where I am now. Right. Lead by example. 
she sees us working hard. My mm-hmm. kids see us working hard. We're always here, always doing something, helping somebody else and trying to lift the next person up, mm-hmm. you know, not leaving mm-hmm. behind. And even with mm-hmm. our students, we tell our students, it doesn't end here. Right. Go to nursing school. We push them. Go to nursing school. We tell them we're still here. Just because the class ended, we're here for you. You have our number. You have our email. If you need us, call us. If you want a refresher, call us. Come back. We're here. And I try to build like a sisterhood with our students more than just instructors and students. We have like a sisterhood. Nice. We're students that call us all the time still thanking us for teaching them because we changed their life. So, you Mm -hmm. know, it's very touching. And we give them encouragement. So we're, mm-hmm. what makes us different than like one of those other big schools is we take pride in what we do. And mm-hmm. we also, you know, if we want our, the people that we actually teach are people from our own community. Yes. So we want to like help our community to grow. And, you know, mm-hmm. we want us to have our own like wealth, you know? Um, and I think if we can educate our community, um, which leads to more money, higher wages, you know, not just having people work, but having like a living wage, you know? Absolutely. And Americans yeah. out in the healthcare field, yeah. you know? Just um, to make sure that we can um, right. lift our community up. And that's kind of what we do. I, I love it. And one, like I said, nursing is a, is a crucial industry. Not only is uh, uh, Albany getting ready to gear up for its own nursing charter school, yes. you know, you know what I mean. It, it is uh, it is extremely important, uh, and it is a very ba- uh, it's a very lucrative industry. So you know, there's a huge population uh, uh, in the capital district who has chosen both male and female to get involved with nursing, but it's also something that is easily translated into other cities. Right. Uh, 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 throughout uh, throughout the country. So you're able to go ahead and take an experience and be able to maybe go create another opportunity in another field in another city or another state uh, to go ahead and, like you said, over, overall increase your income. I know I had the Common Council president on not too long ago, and he was just talking about the average median uh, income there and how it needs to exceed. I mean, it, it needs to increase. And a part of that is one, teaching people how to be entrepreneurs like you guys, but also being able to give yourself the skills and the credentials to go out and be qualified for more. Right. And that's why I love what you guys are doing. I love seeing pictures with all your uh, um, graduates and, they, and they're getting their certificates. But I also love that you guys have a direct connection there with the hospital already, St. Peter's. And a lot of them are already being plugged directly into that system. So. But yeah, uh, so uh, uh, Odeja, no, I'm coming to you. We are nationally certified too. So, yep. so you can make your certification wherever you want. So exactly. You stay here in this area, if you, your goal is to move, then you can move. We've had several students that took their certification and moved like to the South, but you know, um, mm-hmm. and try to make a better life for their families. Nice, nice. Odeja, I didn't forget about you. Don't worry, I'm coming to you as well. Uh, <laughs> because uh, I would like to know, uh, uh, in your early stages, as you were growing up, did you have a mentor? Did you have someone that helped to guide you, uh, that actually led you uh, to becoming uh, the woman that you are today? Was mentorship a part of that journey? Um, I didn't have a mentor per se. I've had multiple people in my life that have, uh, have helped me and encouraged me, um, uh, mainly my mom, like just leading by example mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. watching her and what she mm-hmm. did. My mom, um, I remember growing up and my mother always volunteered at like the Homer Perkins Center. I don't mm-hmm. know if you remember that place, but it's nope. like a second half, second street across from Bethany and it's a, um, a woman's shelter. And mm-hmm. then, so I remember going there, my mom would go there and she would teach and encourage the battered women there. Mm-hmm. So I always saw her like helping in the community. And then like Friday nights, I would go with my dad to the city mission and he would go down there and he would preach there. So, you know, we kind of, it was always about community and helping um, people that are less fortunate than you and, you know, trying to elevate them. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, so, uh, so that's, that, that is where that teaching mindset, uh, that teaching mindset, the altruistic uh, feeling that you have uh, comes from, because it's truly important to give back to others. It's truly important to lead by example. And one of the things I've been saying since I was running my mentoring program there in Albany was that uh, we learn from the successes and failures of individuals that look like us. 
So now you guys have become uh, uh, the example, the mentors for other people to look towards. But I'm thankful that you had, uh, quite, I know you said you mentioned your sister, so shout out to her. Uh, I, I, I'm guessing you're talking about Miss uh, uh, Miss DST herself. Shout out to Tisha. And um, Odeja, same, uh, same thing to you. You know, you said, I think you said uh, your dad was, was uh, ministering down there at the city mission. Yep. All right, as well as your mom teaching uh, uh, at the batters, uh, the batter women's shelter. Uh, uh, the in, the importance of having people in your life is extremely important and it's impactful, which is why I always ask the question about mentorship because I wondered if there was individuals who poured into you the same way you guys are now pouring into others. Oh, of course, yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, I have students I taught five years ago that I can't get rid of. <laughs> they're still yeah. texting me and you know but yeah okay. it, it feels good it feels good to give back i'm all about giving sometimes people are you mm -hmm. give too much are you too nice i believe in you give you shall receive i believe mm -hmm. that our business is growing and that's a mm -hmm. blessing that's the way god is getting that that's what god is giving us right so you know what we're doing i mean people on the street i know what they're using money for i still yep. give it you know i don't discriminate just give it you know you mm -hmm. give it Good, good, good things will come to you, and that's what's happening here. Absolutely, happen. absolutely, and that's and that's a huge part of it. You know, it's uh, it's it's one thing to create success for yourself; mm -hmm. it's another thing to create success for other individuals and to stay compassionate. And that's why I think that you guys chose the perfect name for your training center because uh, the hearts and the minds don't always align. That's right. a, that's a that's a bar by itself. You know, so, uh, uh, you know, the hearts and the minds don't always align, but when they do, you know, I mean, we can go on to build and create great things, financial stability being one of them. Uh, I always tell everybody, you know, I'm so excited now that we're in a space where we can actually talk about finances. We didn't always talk about finances. It was just one of those things that went underneath the radar. We didn't talk about, but now there's so many different platforms, uh, earn your leisure, ash cash. Uh, you know, uh, I, I know several individuals there just in the Albany community that are highlighting and talking about finances. We now talk about uh, mental health. You know, we talk about therapy. These were all taboo uh, subjects that we didn't talk about that we're now talking about so that this generation and the generations that come behind us have more uh, knowledge about it. And uh, they get to learn it directly from you guys now, which is uh, uh, a super important you know, you don't, you don't, uh, it's having that direct connection makes you more of an authentic teacher and your experiences that you came into before you started the hearts and minds is actually what makes you guys such gifted teachers and allows you to impact your students the way that you are. Yes. So thank you again. Um, Y'all are rich. We're like, we're not rich. We work four or five jobs. <laughs> right, exactly. We're not rich, you know? I mean, we, we, we have a business, without, but yeah. we still work in four other jobs, you know? To keep our business We're constantly well, yeah. working around the clock, all night, all day. We got we get ideals in our head, texting each other, two, three in the morning, mm -hmm. nonstop. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Um, Nothing <clears throat> that's worth anything is easy. But that's what we tell our it. students as well. Yeah, it if is. If you really want it, it, you'll work hard and you know put the time in to create mm -hmm. what you want in life. And we also have a student I spoke with last week who stated that we inspired her to become an instructor. So now she's looking to become a phlebotomy oh, yeah. uh, um, instructor. Um, we have students all the time calling us, talking about just thank you, just thank you. We get mm -hmm. cards too. That we get cards. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, you know. You don't realize that everyone doesn't graduate from high school. Mm -hmm. Everyone Absolutely. doesn't go to college right after high school, you know? So um, even though, it's only a four or six week uh, course. It means a lot to most of these students, Absolutely. you know? And sometimes it's their only graduation they've ever had. Mm -hmm. The only mm -hmm. thing they've ever completed. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a pride that you take, you know, that they have. Um, and it makes them want to do more and, and um, go on and get a job and work. You know, we had one girl, she was her first graduation. She was ever mm -hmm. crying. Like she was mm -hmm. so ecstatic that she actually was able to complete something and finish something and go out there and get a job. Mm -hmm. You know, people that mm -hmm. were living in the projects and now she is a little girl. She, I think she drove, no, she wrote, caught two buses here. Mm -hmm. Sunday. And some days I think she had to bring her kids with her. Mm -hmm. 
And, um, but she made it, you know, she sacrificed to get here every Sunday, every Saturday. And now she's working. She doesn't live in a projects anymore. She was able mm-hmm. to like make, create a living wage for herself. Nice. And, you know, it makes us feel good and it makes them feel good. We have well. students that commuted from um, Newburgh every mm-hmm. week. Newburgh, yeah. You know, Hudson. They want it. Yeah. And they tell them, you hungry? Come get it. Nice. We will feed you. Um, and then they go off and be successful and they come back to us because <laughs> we can't get rid of them. But that's mm-hmm. a good thing. That's a, uh, that's actually a, a great thing. You know what I mean? It's a great thing when people want, want to continually reach out to you and mm-hmm. to stay connected to you. And it's an even better thing to always make yourself available. Um, mm-hmm. But as, as both of you guys are now considered uh, uh, to be entrepreneurs, as well as I know you still have your, uh, your own jobs outside of what you guys are doing with the hearts and mind. But uh, do you think, uh, based upon your experiences now, do you think that entrepreneurship is something that should be taught in the high school. Why or why not? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. There's no better feeling than working for yourself and right. knowing that, <laughs> you know, I swear there isn't having flexibility. That's mm-hmm. something that I'm loving right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, um, but it, it, you take pride in what you're doing when it's for you. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, and I think that every person definitely should know something about entrepreneurship. Okay. Your own, especially in your own community. Okay. All right. Well, uh, and, and I also agree. And I think that there's only a small handful of states that that actually teach uh, uh, entrepreneurship and financial literacy. But I think that that is something that should actually be part of the national curriculum, especially if we haven't learned anything coming through this global pandemic. We have more entrepreneurs now than I've ever seen in my lifetime. And people are saying, you know what, I'm refused to go back into work. I'm going to be working from home permanently. And I'm now going to invest the time and energy I was doing for somebody else into myself. So shout, shout out to you guys for uh, continuing to work for others as you continue to build, but also uh, having the initiative and going out on a risk and a leap of faith to create something that's helping other people. And I think that, that that's truly important. Yeah. All right. But I also want to ask you guys this because uh, you're doing so many different things. Quite, I think you're also, uh, uh, what is it, um, officiating weddings? Yes. Uh, you know. Street wedding officiant, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, here, here's my question. Uh, Quite, I'm coming to you first. Uh, how do you guys and uh, how do you guys keep or find a healthy work-life balance? So it took me a very long time to find balance. Um, what I do now is I hustle hard from Sunday night to Wednesday. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday is family time. Mm. Um, but it took me a long time to get that together. Um, mm. I realized working somebody seven to three or eight to four wasn't working for me anymore. Um, so I like my overnights, so I do my overnights, teach during the day, and on the weekend, that's my family time. Um, I still teach, but it's a very, very, very piece (laughs) of the day, very small piece of the day, but most of the time, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, is strictly family time, Um, Mm -hmm. and it's been working out for me. The phones don't stop ringing, but, you know, I'm home, you know? Nice. Nice. Odeja, I'm coming to you next as well. Uh, you know, I mean, being uh, being an entrepreneur, being someone who is juggling and managing uh, so many different uh, uh, ideas and initiatives. Uh, how do you find a healthy work life balance for you? Um, hearts and minds. That was my my outlet. That was what my uh, my way out from working mm-hmm. for other people. So um, the past few months, actually. We've been doing pretty well. We've been pretty busy. So I haven't even been working as much as I used to work. Mm. So um, they see me when they see me. Um, ah, so, so um, I've been here, you know, doing, you know, working for myself. And mm. therefore, I have way more time to see my kids and my husband. Mm. So um, they like it. So no. <laughs> they're happy to have I, me. I, I bet. I bet. You know what I mean? And, and uh, 
uh, I'm glad that uh, both of you guys have and uh, continue to find the balance. As you guys know, you know, I mean, your parents, your wives, you, uh, uh, you know, it's always going to be a readjustment. As, as soon as we find uh, uh, a space, yeah. you know, uh, then something else comes and we got to readjust. So, you know, what I mean, but it, I think that it is uh, on the road to become the healthier versions of ourselves learning how to find a balance. And I think Sunday uh, uh, um, uh, at my church, the sermon was about contentment. And, you know what I mean, being able to understand the importance of contentment. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you don't have continued aspirations. So we're not talking about being complacent, but being content with, uh, with every season uh, that God, that God uh, mm -hmm. affords us. And I'm happy that you guys are finding and have found a balance that works between work, entrepreneurship, and family. So, you know, because a lot of people are struggling with that. You have ideas, you have interests, you have aspirations, but it's like, it's only 24 hours in the day. And right. I got to sleep some of those hours. And so, you know, I, I am extremely happy to hear that both of you guys are finding and have found um, um, uh, a good uh, work-life balance because that is, important to sustain who you are and who you are becoming. Right, yeah, it's definitely a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a work in progress. Yeah. Sometimes we tell each other, like, go to right, bed, turn I'm, your phone I'm, off. Turn your phone off, go to bed, <laughs> respond D&D, &D, or if she yeah. tells me she's working overnight, no, you're not, you're staying home tonight. And we yell at each other about not working somewhere else because we yeah. just need a break, you know? And then we feel like we can do it because like, oh, we can just go. We've been doing it right. Right, we're like, no, no, stay home. <laughs> Interesting question for you guys because I see the dynamic of you guys working together. If 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 you guys would say somebody was the heart and somebody was was the mind of the training center, who would it be? Who would have? Who would be the heart and who would be the mind? I'm just throwing that one out there. It all depends. It all depends, <laughs> honestly, because sometimes the students say that I'm the hard one. Mm. Um. So. Um, but then other times I think that I have more of a heart. <laughs> so. well, 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 actually, 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 hold off on answering that. That's a great segue into bringing in that student. I'm not going to ask you guys to answer that. So, uh, you know, I'm going to ask your student if she was to, to tell me who was what. So uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, you guys can actually uh, 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 have her come in, too. I don't want you guys to answer it anymore. So I'm glad you just uh, glad you reminded me that. Just bring your chair behind us, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can bring it behind us. Yeah, that was the perfect segue, uh, Odeja. It's like, actually, you know what? No, I'm not even gonna ask y'all no more. I'm gonna ask her. So this is Sierra. Hi. Hi, Sierra. <laughs> uh, and, and thank you for joining our podcast with the Back Community. Uh, and I know that they threw you on the spot and, 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 and hopefully, uh, hopefully they, they gave you, I think quite a session, she was going to give you some lip gloss earlier to make sure. Said, ah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but, um, uh, how has your experience been working with the hearts and mind, uh, training, uh, training center? My experience, it's been good. They are always helping you out. They're there to answer any questions you have. They help you succeed. Um, I just got my phlebotomy certificate through them and it was a great program. I definitely recommend it very, it's, I wouldn't say easy, but it's a good concept to pick up on and they're here to help you hands on and any questions and they put you up to succeed. So it's nice. great. What's next for you now that you have your uh, national certificate, what's next for you after you've received the instruction from the Hearts and Mind Training Center? Well, uh, what aspirations do you have? I want, well, I've been filling out for phlebotomy jobs already. I just had an interview with St. Peter's today. Um, oh my God, I didn't know All that. right, we <laughs> gonna speak that into existence. Um, so I wanna start doing phlebotomy um, there and then I wanna start doing RN classes in the long run future. Um, I'm currently doing their EKG class. Um, and I want to get that certificate and then possibly move the arm glasses. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, like, uh, like I said, we're going to speak that into existence. I wish you uh, the best of luck on that interview that you just 
uh, 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 endured, and I'm sure that you are prepared thanks to the knowledge and the training you received at Hearts and Minds. So I definitely wish you uh, the best with that. But before you go, I do have one question for you. I was just asking them if they were to, uh, uh, for the Hearts and Mind Training Center, who would be the heart of the training center? Who would be the mind? So Sierra, I'm going to ask you, if you could go ahead and let us know, uh, who would be the heart and who would be the mind? I think the heart would be Laquetta <laughs> and Odeja would be the mind. Just okay. because Odeja does more of like, you know, the breaking down of the teaching. So mm -hmm. I think she's more of, you know, the teaching one and Laquetta mm -hmm. is more of the, you know, you guys can do this, you know, you're okay. Stuff like that, mm -hmm. like keeping you balanced. But nice. Balanced together, so. Nice, nice. And, and, and actually, you know, uh, uh, thank you for sharing that with us. And I think I was just telling them they have a dynamic uh, relationship and you can tell and you can feel it. But uh, uh, it was even better just getting a chance to hear it directly from one of their students because you've been directly impacted by them. And I, I, I know that uh, uh, Odeja was saying earlier, she's like, it, you know, it wasn't that uh, 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 in depth or thought out with the name, but I think your name uh, has extreme significance. And I think that you guys truly are the hearts and minds of the training center. Uh, but uh, thank you very much, uh, Miss Sierra. Uh, uh, it was Sierra, right? I said that right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, good luck uh, uh, on that job opportunity that I know you're going to get. Thank yes, you. Thank you for having me. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and let me see. I want to go ahead and ask the two of you uh, uh, as the founders. Um, this is probably one of my favorite questions from season two that I like to ask everybody. Um, and Odeja, I'm going to come to you first. Uh, how would you define success? Um, success for me is, um, I think, happiness, honestly happiness and having a sense of peace. Um, now, as far as the business goes, success would be making sure that we continue to grow and graduate um, more students and make sure that they're working and, you know, being, um, you know, successful in, uh, what, in what they try to, uh, what's the word? what their goals are you know yep, what, what they're creating okay yeah okay all right all right uh well same question for you quetta um uh if you were to define success what does success look like for you how would you define success um i'm pretty much what they just said uh peace of mind definitely the peace of mind mm -hmm. um happiness um and just never give up never give up there's days when i'm like F this, we're done. But then she's like, nope, nope. nope. Yeah. She will we're me back quitters. in. We're not quitters. <laughs> um, you know, you're going to have good days and bad days. Um, just don't let your bad days outweigh your good days. Um, mm -hmm. But I just think, you know, not giving up is the key. Never, just don't give up. Just keep pushing, keep striving, and you will be successful. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I got two more questions for you guys, and I'm going to let you go. Uh, 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 my next question, I think I started with uh, Odeja last time, so Quetta, I'm coming back to you. Uh, and actually, uh, this is great, uh, especially with how you led off uh, earlier uh, uh, and, and when you were explaining uh, you becoming a mom and some of those uh, decisions that you made earlier on. Um, but if you were thinking about your younger self, what is something you wish someone would have told the younger version of Laquetta Alexander at the time. Mm -hmm. um, what is something that you wish someone would have told you, the younger version of yourself? Have patience. Um, nothing is easy. Um, nothing comes easy. Um, mainly having patience. Okay. Mainly having patience. Okay. I like it. I like it. Odeja, same question for you. I'm coming to you now. Um, thinking about your younger self, the younger version of you, what is something that you wish someone would have told the younger version of yourself that you know now? 
Um, I think they did. I wish I would have listened, you mean. <laughs> um, we would have got here a lot sooner <laughs> um, and been doing this. Um, so basically, I can't even say that because my mom's going to watch this and my dad. So um, <laughs> uh, I've been told what, you know, we, we're always told what to do and what's right. But sometimes when you're younger, you don't listen and you want to go out and do things on your own and, you know, find your own way. But um, I think if I had just listened, I would have got to where I am now a little sooner. Okay. So, okay. Listen, that's a good one. <laughs> that's, a, that, uh, that's a great one. That's a great one. Because it's not like you said, uh, we have individuals who are speaking into us, but sometimes we're just not in the space and the mindset to wrap our minds around what they're saying, because, you know, we all think that we know it and we have our own way. Mm-hmm. you know so all right final question final question uh before i let you guys uh I'll go ahead and go is um and this one is i'm going to start with odeja um what about your life's path are you most proud of um i think my ability to touch others and help others mm-hmm. So um, being a nurse, I have had many encounters with many patients and whether it be being an advocate for them or um, caring for their loved ones, um, I think that is what I'm most proud of is being able to help other people, you know, make a difference in other people's lives. So even from nursing all the way up into, you know, to teaching, you know, you, I'm able to create and make a difference in other people's lives and what their outcomes are i love it i love it and quite a baby i'm coming to you too um what about your life path are you others. Most proud of? definitely helping others um boy i get text messages and phone calls about things all the time people think i'm i'm this person i'm like i don't know um but definitely helping others um if I know it and, you know, someone asks me, I'm here. Um, I connect people with jobs. You know, I do home care. So, you know, I connect people with the home care jobs. And um, I like to help mm-hmm. others and change people's lives, um, especially when I see that um, they're hungry, you mm-hmm. know, um, and, and you show me that this is what they really want. Okay. Okay. All right. I like uh, I, I I like that answer uh, uh, from uh, the both of you, um, and it seems like altruism or the unselfish regard for the needs and interests of others is something that is uh, very important to the both of you. Um, and um, I wish you guys continued success moving forward. Um, I wish you guys continued passion moving forward because. I do know, you know, burnout does exist. And, you know, so I, I will wish you guys continued passion. So hopefully you uh, you continue to find that balance, that rhythm that uh, that's working for you, so that that way that passion can continue to burn. Uh, but like I said, uh, happy uh, Women's History Month, happy Women well, International Women's Day. I know it passed already, but we celebrate all month. Um, thank you guys for being entrepreneurs. Uh, Thank you guys for being mothers. Thank you guys for being leaders. Uh, Thank you guys by uh, for leading by example. And I really wanted to thank you for affording your time with me on the back community. And I can't wait to get your story out to the people. Um, Thanks for having us. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, It's truly my pleasure. Um, And if I'm not forgetting anything, um, I don't think that I am, but uh, yeah, like I said, uh, I wish you guys continued success. And uh, uh, thank you um, for uh, sharing uh, your story with me. And I'll play catch up with the both of you guys later. Thank you. All right. And be sure to tell that student, uh, uh, I send my regards to her as well, Miss Sierra. You guys have a wonderful night. We will. Thank Thank you. you. Bye-bye. Keep climbing up the ladder. Black Lives Matter. It matters. Matter. So you young people give me all. So you young people give me all.
give for you So you young people give for you So you young people give for you Matter, matter A black lives matter They matter, they matter A black lives matter